Good morning to all. It's nice to meeting you all through this webinar meeting. And also, I thank Dr. M. Suresh and uh, Prabhakaran and other team members of uh, PMC Tech for making this wonderful opportunity to interact you through this webcasting or uh, webinar program titled Cascography and its application. Dear participants, I'm very so glad uh, to know that you all people are very much interested to know what actually the crystallography is. Because uh, nowadays the crystallography is becoming a, a service oriented uh, research, and many of all the application oriented research. But even then, if you want to characterize and if you want to ascertain the material up to its atomic level or molecular level, the only possible thing now today we have is only crystallography. That is the way in which we are determining the atomic and molecular structure, and also we are determining the crystal structures. So, with this introduction, I wish to start the session. As I told by Dr. M. Suresh from TMC and Dr. Sahil Ulam, working as a professor at University of Washington College at Nagar Goil. So this is my first seminar. So, yeah, so I'll intro about uh, my talk. It's a very well known uh, topic. It is, that can be divided into three categories. So, like, I'm a professor, I'm a university college. We are going to discuss about only the test plane, in which a small and important code that I can control on the test or window on the world of atoms. If you want to see the atoms or the molecules, generally the crystals are the preferred one. And you have to crystallize the thing, then you have to do extra instruction, that's a crystallography work. Then you can see how the atoms or molecules are arranged in your material. Because it is a very older method, but still it has its own important Then, why crystals? Why we are thinking of the crystals? We know the crystals are the fascinating one for a very long time in the jewels. You know very well, carbon and charcoal, both are allotropies, but diamond has its own value. And who is responsible for uh, your modern gadgets? And who is how your uh, laser technology is working? We know how your uh, watch is working with your uh, physiometric system. So, symmetry and automatic ADP and ADP, many electric materials, and many other things are available in the market in the crystalline form. Many application oriented material are available in the market as only can you hear me everyone okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm yeah I'm, okay i'm going to do so it is available yes, in the sir, yeah. market in the crystalline yeah. phase uh, because the crystalline phase has its own unique property such kind property that's why the crystalline phases are the preferred phase for the many industrial applications as well as for uh, some biological applications also we will discuss about Upcoming slides. Then, what are crystals? It's a very basic information about the crystals. The crystals are the solid material, right? It has its own atoms and molecules arranged in a periodic pattern or a repeating pattern. Then, this are the specialized person who is working on the crystallography is known as the normally crystallographers. The crystallography starts from its morphology, that is your external morphology, how it arises. That is a question and thirst of many people for a very long year. After that, there was a brace, lattices, unit cell, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we are going into that topic, right? So before going that, I just explain. Today I'm going to explain the fundamentals, that is a theory of the crystallography, how the theory of crystallography comes out, and what are different important points that we have to remember in your crystallography, then how you can do your extra diffraction and how you can solve the structures. I feel that the last part of this session is very important because I'm going to show you how you can solve the structures using the software, crystallography software. Still, many of my friends and many of my research scholars and many of my colleagues are asking, can you show me how you are solving the structures? I'm going to simply explain you 
with a small structure which can be easily solved but that can be done only by this uh, small piece of tab after that we can have some other session for uh, detailed explanation of the software so i i can simply say that there is a theoretical part there is an experimental part and also i'm going to show how your computational works are going to done in your crystallography right start from the father of the crystallography the crystallography starts during 18th century when abe have a scientist a mineralogist who invented your calcite crystal has its own unique internal architecture which is repeated again and again hence the calcite crystal topology arrived actually it is a wonderful invention by your uh, known as your abe have right after that many inventions was done even then it's a very first invention in your crystallography who is known as abe have then so so he is responsible to find out the units of a b c alpha beta gamma etc etc right then again there are two important persons one is ronchet who accidentally invented that x rays because nowadays x rays are popularly used for the diffraction work of your crystals and hence they try to find out your structure of your crystal structures and also your molecules as well as the atomic bonding etc etc without x rays it's not possible to uh, discuss about your crystallography or anything else in the same way in the next invention is your lave invention lave max lave who who found that there is a uniform pattern in your x ray crystallography work when the x rays are passed to your crystals then you are getting an exposure through your photographic plate in older days nowadays there are many devices charge recoverable devices there are that is there are some counters by which you can count the number of photons that is the x ray photons are coming out but whatever it may be there is an uniform pattern in your um, outcoming x rays or your output of your uh, x ray diffractive meter he is the person who first invented the concept there is a uniform pattern hence that pattern is now now also that patterns are called as your lave pattern so solving the lave pattern first getting the lave pattern is by your experimental method then solving the lave pattern or going inside the lave pattern and try to identify the how the electron densities are in your crystals that is done by your computational work okay so in that sense we are going for the next important concept that is your brack diffraction brack we know very well there are two bracks father and son who invented the concept that is the brack diffraction x ray diffraction that is when your d spacing is comparable with your lambda then you can get your diffraction pattern the diffraction pattern will have a maxima and minima depends upon the interplanar distance then you can get your lave pattern so this is again a milestone in your crystallography right these four milestones first start from your abe have then goes to ranjan then goes to your um, lave then goes to your brock these milestones are making your uh, crystallography as a wonderful field and many people are working now right so with this introduction i'm going to uh, again a fundamental concept in your crystallography though it is very well known to us i'm just explaining the things there are four type of lattices in crystallography we call that there is some magical numbers there are four type of lattices you cannot go for the fifth type of lattice in crystallography or in crystal sciences then there are seven crystal systems you cannot claim there is an eighth wonder that is a, there is no eighth crystal system there is only 14 Dravis lattices and there are only 32 point groups and there are only 230 space groups these are called as a magical numbers and these magical numbers are still existing for a very long time still the people are claiming in your liquid crystals and in other fields your uh, there are five fold symmetries are possible and there are some other new systems are possible but in solid crystalline phase you have only these no these numbers hence these numbers are called as your magical numbers in crystallography so the first magic is your four type of lattices we know very well there is a primitive lattice i am not going to take much more on this topic right because it is well known to physics people and us you are hemis people primitive bodies are all face centered 
Generally, the third category, face centered, is known as your base center, that is also. Here we call that as a A face center, B face center, or C face center, any one of the faces. If all the faces are having additional lattice point, then that is nothing but F lattice, that is nothing but all face center lattice. That's how you are uh, categorizing the type of lattices. Then there are seven crystal systems cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinic. You know very well how the cubic system is. Then the that is a cubic is nothing but your uh, ironmost symmetry. Then it is losing its symmetry slowly. For example, if you go for the tetragonal, one side of the crystal is lengthier. That is, C axis may be a lengthier axis or the shorter axis. Then that is nothing but your uh, tetragonal. Then orthorhombic, the symmetry is just losing. So these all are by only means of your A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma. These six parameters, these six parameters, we very well know that they are called as your lattice parameters or unusual parameters, right? So the least symmetric crystal system is your triclinic, and the most symmetric one is your cubic. That how a unit cell will be, whatever it may be, a unit cell should have some periodicity. For example, you can see these two diagrams a unit cell of triclinic crystal. And another one is amorphous arrangement of that triclinic system. That is, there are eight atoms. They are arranged in some corners of definite length. You can take that, it is a definite length. Both the, uh, the, both, both the parallel papers are having that same volume you imagine. And all the corners are having some atoms. But you can see that in the lower one, the atoms are arranged in a periodic way. Whereas in the here, the atoms are randomly arranged. That is, there is no any uniformity between these two or other atoms. But here you can see these two are uniformly arranged. And these two are uniformly arranged. If you just translate this here, this will come here. If you go, this will come. So there is a uniform pattern or repeating pattern of your orientation of your atoms or molecules or the cluster of molecules. That is very essential. If it is there, then only we can talk about the single crystals. Otherwise, the crystals are called as not single crystals. They are called as your amorphous material. Sometimes they are called as a polycrystalline materials also. They are randomly oriented, your atoms or molecules or the particles, right? Then they are called as your amorphous or polycrystalline. What we are discussing here is only your single crystalline materials because the single crystals can only act as a diffraction grating for your x-rays then only you can get your diffraction pattern and also then only you can go for your other work and you can find out your atomic or molecular structures then how your lattices are formed how your cells are formed that is your unit cells are formed that is the first one you can see here there is a primitive cell there are two primitive cells that I have mentioned here. There is a non-primitive cell also. And here, there are double primitive cell or triple the primitive cells are available. It's only the number of points or number of lattice points that is included. That means the number of atoms are included in your system. That doesn't matter. If there are there is only one lattice point, then that is called as a primitive. More than one, it is doubled, then it may be a triple. These all are accounted in your crystallography work as Z, atomic number. Okay, atomic number is a general where nowadays it can be called as the number of asymmetric units in your system. Number of asymmetric units in your system. We will see in detail when we are going to the results of your X-ray crystallographic work. Right. Then there is a symmetry in your crystal because the symmetries are making your crystals or uh, the crystal should have should have some symmetry inside that then only it can make that your single crystal and you can get your x-ray diffraction nature actually loves the symmetry everywhere there is a symmetry in the human body if you see the butterfly you can see your Taj Mahal or pyramids in the diagram of your heart whatever it may be everything in the nature it has its own symmetry the symmetry is a beautiful word. The symmetry operation is again a beautiful one. 
Okay. What are the kinds of symmetries that is in your crystal systems? That is very essential. And uh, before going into detail about the symmetry operations and other things, the audience, please remember that the symmetry operations are not done by us. You are not going to do anything on your crystals. For example, if you are growing a crystal and you are getting the single crystal, you imagine there are four molecules or four atoms, whatever it may be, available in your system. These four atoms are arranged in some way and you are getting that crystals. And you are trying to find out how they are oriented. And you are trying to find out how these are related. You are going to find that relation, not you are making that relation. Keep it in your mind. Whenever we are explaining the symmetry operations, normally people think that we are actually doing that symmetry operation. No, no, that is not the kind. There are n number of bonds or n number of molecules or some asymmetric units, whatever it may be. It is available in your single crystals. This single crystals, you can take any single crystal. It contain n number of balls or n number of molecules or n number of units. How these units are arranged? Definitely there should be some symmetry between these atoms or molecules or units. We are trying to find that symmetry only inside the system. We are not going to push or we are not going to put any symmetry operation. The symmetry operation is naturally occurring. If we are just finding what is that. There is a famous quote from Sir C. V. Raman. He normally says that the real purpose of science is to comprehend the nature. Huh? It has to comprehend. What do you mean by that? Comprehend. It, it has to explain what actually it is. That is that's itself. The same work that crystallography is doing. It is trying to explain what actually the molecules are arranged. It is going to explain. That's it. For that only, we are studying the symmetry operation. I hope you understand. The symmetry operations or symmetries. We are broadly categorizing this uh, symmetry into two categories. That is a type one and type two, whatever it may be. I can say that there are four important symmetry operations. One is translation. Another one is rotation. Another one is mirror. Another one is inversion. I hope these are the fundamental ones. From this fundamental, fundamental one, other operations are arising. The name itself, you can very well understand. Translation means it is a definite need of your crystalline system. That is, when you talk about your, when you talk about your uh, um, lattice itself, there should be a, some periodicity. That periodicity arises only due to your translation movement or your translation symmetry. Rotation means Sometimes the molecules are connected through some rotational liberation or some rotational symmetry. Then that is called as a rotational symmetry. We are going to see what actually. Then mirror, just like a mirror, how we are seeing on the mirror, how the image of ourself and ourself itself, we are connected. In the way, two molecules may be connected in a crystal system. That's why we call that as a mirror operation. Then the inversion operation. You can see that the inversion operation is nothing but zero dimensional operation. And your rotational operation is nothing but one dimensional operation because it requires an axis rotation. And mirror, it's a two dimensional operation. That means, that is, you require a plane. From the plane only, you can do your mirror operation. There is a combination of the, these operations are all pos also possible. For example, I can say that there is a very famous space, space group. People normally come across. There is a P21 or P21 bar C or P21, 21, These space groups are available to our uh, uh, normal crystal systems. And many people talk uh, had about these words. What do you mean by 21? 21 is nothing but screw operation. What do you mean by screw operation? How a screw moves inside a wall or inside a wood, how it moves? When you rotate and give a translation, then the screw moves. In the similar way, the rotation plus translation that gives you a two-one operation. And there are four-one operations, four-two operations also. That is four-fold symmetry. We will see in detail about that before that. Rotation plus translation that gives you your screw operation. Similarly, there is a roto inversion roto reflection there are many other combination of your symmetry operations are also 
available okay then so this is general category of the what are symmetry operations can be done and how the molecules may be related that we can found out but how to group that for example you are going to have only um, two groups of operations in your triclin system there are seven crystal systems you can see that only two point groups are available in your triclinic system that is in a triclinic system without disturbing the periodicity or without disturbing the symmetry of the system you can do only two operation one is translation operation another one is inversion operation translation with inversion operation that's why there are only two groups are available that is two point groups are available that is one and one bond okay and and it goes on extending so there are only 32 point groups Bishika, bye, yeah. This 32 point groups. For example, in a monoclinic system, you are having three, and in your orthorhombic system, you are having point groups of again three. In a trigonal, you can see that three, three bar, three two, three m, three bar, two m. So there are six. And tetragonal system, you can see there are six. And similarly, it goes on. And if you count, and you can get into know that there are 32 point groups are available in your system the point groups are nothing it is very simple they are groups of symmetry operation that makes your triclinic system as a crystalline system or monoclinic system as a crystalline system that is a group of operation which is possible in a crystalline system that is listed in the right hand side hence there are only 32 possible operations group of operations are possible in your crystallography so this magical number that is your 32 point groups then again when you go this is nothing but a stereographic representation of the symmetry elements as i am talking about the crystallography if i go into the detail i have to go for every dot line and then there is some shapes and or i have to explain so i just give the presentation or just to give the slide that's it that is this is stereographic representation normally used by the international crystallographers for representing your phase groups or point groups and etc etc many symmetry operations also can be explained by this concept or by this stereographic projection right then the next one is we are going to in detail about some of your uh, uh, symmetry operations first we start with the rotation axis we know there is a two fold three fold four fold six fold operation from the picture you can know that there is your two fold it is nothing but 180 degree because it is known to everyone 360 divided by 2 that is nothing but 180 degree that 180 degree operation is shown here in your figure that is 180 degree operation then here it is nothing but a four fold operation what do you mean by that 360 degree by 4 that is nothing but 90 degree that is 360 divided by 4 that is nothing but 90 degree for every 90 degree this picture is repeating itself hence it is nothing but your that is your uh, this uh, this operation is nothing but your four fold operation otherwise it is called as your tetrad okay and also there is a six fold operation is also possible and we know very well there is no five fold operation or the five fold symmetry is not not uh, in your uh, uh, crystallography five fold symmetry is a permanent symmetry as, as far as your crystallography is concerned right then so again a small diagram which explain your uh, rotation symmetry in a simplest way one fold you can see that there is a five phases in your one fold rotation that means every 360 degree only it can repeat it because you can see that there are five sides so you cannot make this to be a repeating pattern before your 360 degree okay so after a 360 degree rotation you can get your symmetry or you can get the same pattern hence one fold three fold six fold two fold and four fold okay then there is some mirror plates what do you mean by mirror we know if there is a plane which reflect an object and you are getting that image then that is nothing but your mirror plane it is again a symmetry you can see here these two pictures are connected to the mirror 
that is just like this figure is a mirror image of this one or this figure may be a mirror image of this one again i reiterate the same thing that i have already explained audience please remember in your mind that we are not going to fix any mirror in your crystals we are not going to introduce any mirror inside your crystals there are few molecules there are two more for example there are two molecules you imagine here one molecule another one molecule how these molecules are related if you see the things then you get into know that they are related to some mirror operation what do we mean mirror operation for example if the first figure has the coordinates of x y z and you are fixing and you are imagining that the mirror is available in your x y plane then the second figure is nothing but x y minus z there is only the mirror reflection in your z axis that's why they we call that as they are connected you through your mirror operation okay then that is nothing but your mirror plane then there is an inversion center what do you mean by that there are x y z points and if you invert all those that what do you mean by that minus x minus y and minus z then that is nothing but a inversion operation that is every point of your one molecule is invert of other it is in both the way that is vice versa that is possible okay that is nothing but your inversion operation or inversion center then there are some rotary in inversion what do you mean by rotary inversion it is a combination of two operations you may get into know that there is a rotation as well as the inversion you can see the picture here that is there is a rotation that is the here a here b and it is getting rotated and it is get mirrored here then that's why we call that it is nothing but a rotation and inversion a rotation and inversion that may lead to that is a rotation and inversion that leads to a new concept that is nothing but a improper symmetry operation that is nothing but an improper symmetry operation okay so this is nothing but your rotary inversion then that is glide what do you mean by glide again a glide is a two operation two step operation you can tell there is a reflection and translation i already explained you there are two beautiful uh, combinatorial operations in your crystallography one is screw and another one is glide what do you mean by screw means if you rotate and translate then that is nothing but your screw how the screws are working if you rotate and give the translation then the screws may go inside any system if you rotate and you are giving some pressure or you are giving some you are giving some translation then the screw starts to move inside in a similar way if you mirror and you are translate the thing that is nothing but your glide plane you can see here this is nothing but the b sand here you can see the leg steps of some person normally the human body is if you cut your human body into two pieces it is a mirror symmetry right here you can see the left leg and right leg that is this left leg impression is a mirror of the right leg inversion but there is translated with some distance this is nothing but glide this is nothing but your glide plane okay so this glide plane where is actually the glide planes are available in space groups you may again you may uh, come across uh, your crystal space groups that is p21 bar c what do you mean by bar c the c is nothing but c glide the c is nothing but it's simply c glide there is an ab mirror that in the ab plane there is a mirror and there is a translation in your c axis that is nothing but c glide so this kind of operations are available in your crystallography in many places it start from your monoclonic up to your cubic then again uh, there is a beautiful uh, volume of book which is known as your uh, international crystallography tables it is normally published uh, by your international union of crystallography and nowadays they are available in uh, digital copy and uh, what do you mean by that that is if you take that table and you can get into know how your p1 or p1 bar are arranged how your p1 or p1 bar are arranged and uh, you can get into know that your how your p2 or p21 or p21 bar c p221 on space group for 230 space groups you can get into know how the molecules will be in that 230 space groups and that gives you an important information which is normally called as 
equivalent positions. You may heard about this word, and for every crystallography paper, you can see that in a, there may be some hydrogen bonding table. In the under the table, they have given that word that is equivalent positions. What do you mean by equivalent positions? That is, if there is a point you can take, if there is a point here, X, Y, Z, then what is the equivalent point of this uh, X, Y, Z in another unit cell or within the unit cell? That is, again, X, Y, Z only. You cannot see this point in anywhere inside your unit cell in a triclinic system because the triclinic P1 bar is the least symmetric system. Okay. And if you take your P1 bar, it's very important. You can get into know. There are two points in your unit cells. You can see that there are two molecules or two atoms, or you can call that the two asymmetric units in your systems. You can say that. we cannot say that asymmetric unit. One asymmetric unit, another one is another one is called as the symmetric unit. These two are the units. There are two units are available. How these units are related? It is only by means of if one is x, y, z, then another one is nothing but x bar, y bar, z bar, or minus x minus y and minus z so they are inwardly connected there is an inversion symmetry or they are inwardly connected so that is your triclinic unit cell and its symmetry operations audience please remember that as it's a very simple system we can explain these two if you go for another other space groups there are n number of space groups are available in each crystal system Hence, it's not possible to explain all your space groups or systems. Even then, I have go for one more. That is some monoclinic in itself and its symmetry operation. You can see here, this is called as P2. What do you mean by P2? P means it is primitive in itself. And what do you mean by 2? The 2 is nothing but some two-fold operation in, inside your crystalline system. system. Right. Okay, so this P2. this is nothing but your P2. So in P2 system, there is X, Y, Z position, and there will be a X bar, Y, Z bar. What do you mean by you are making a twofold rotation about your Y axis? That is implication. What do you mean by that? There is an X, Y, Z position, and you are rotating your system or you are rotating your molecule by 180 degree then you can get another molecule or the two molecules available in the systems are related to this two-fold symmetry that's why this is x bar y and z bar and similarly there is a p21 another space group in your these two space group are non-center symmetric space group because there is no inversion centers in you in, in your system here you can see that the what is mean by p21 you are rotating about 180 degree and you are translating it by half unit you are rotating by 180 degree and translating it by half unit then that is nothing but your two one screw that is nothing but your two one screw so this space group is called as your p21 right so this is a non center now we come to this this p21 bar c which is very popularly known space group because this space group is uh, abundantly available in your organic crystal systems because many organic crystals are crystallized in your P21 bar C space group. That is, you are making a 2 1 screw and also you are doing glide operation. Both are combined. You are making, there is a roto translation. You can tell that you are operating some rotation and there is some translation. Then you are giving some glide. Okay. So there are two operations are available. If you add these two operation, then you will end up with the combination of your symmetry equivalent positions, which include X bar, Y bar, Z bar. What do you mean by that? Minus X, minus Y, minus Z. Then definitely there is an inversion operation or inversion center inside your crystal. Then this space group is called as your centrosymmetric space group. Now you may get into idea how to find out whether a space group is centrosymmetric or non-centrosymmetric. Very simple. If it is a centrosymmetric space group, definitely there should be a X bar, Y bar, Z bar operation. Right? And if it is a centrosymmetric space group, definitely it should have X bar, Y bar, Z bar operation. Otherwise, it won't have that X bar, Y bar, Z bar or minus X minus Y and 
minus is the top pressure. Okay, then. So this just uh, summarizing the things, how the crystal families and crystal systems and lattice systems are available. Again, I am repeating the same. There are only four lattices, seven crystal systems, 14 Braves lattices, 32 point groups, and 230 space groups. Then, okay, whatever it may be, this is a fundamental that I have explained. Apart from that, the crystallography is a very vast area. We cannot uh, complete all those things. There are some beautiful books available in the uh, uh, market which explain about the symmetry operations, etc. One of such books is Stout and Jensen. I can give it in my chat or uh, I can give it in uh, another uh, text messages you will get into to know. That is Olsen, Stout and Jensen. They are very popular books. Those who want to study the cryptography, please go through the book. That book is very wonderful one. Right. What is the parts of your XA crystallography? First, you have to grow the crystals. Then. You have to do X-ray diffraction or you have to do diffraction work, measure the diffraction. Then you have to solve the structure. You have to solve the structure. That is, when you solve the structure, when start to solve the structure, definitely there is a phase problem. 